very well. Uh, it's very nice to see how much you have engaged in the tasks and um, how much creativity this also triggers. Not only the images and the story, but also your own creativity in terms of designing sequences and planning uh, classwork. In a way, if we feel motivated to uh, engage students in these tasks, then students will be highly motivated as well and it will be more engaging, the whole experience will be more engaging uh, totally. Um, now, since we have decided in this particular meeting to develop activities revolving around visuals, not only still but moving images, time for another story, but this time another kind of story. And for this one I am also going to ask you to interact with me despite the distance and despite the fact that this is a recorded video, I'm going to be guiding you and I hope you can follow me and at the same time use your imagination to follow the process, right? Um, another kind of story I was saying. I'm going to show you this picture now and my question is, can you tell this story? I'm sure you can. You can think of the traditional Rapunzel story you can think of the characters, the situations, um, and well, the way the story unfolds, right? I'm sure this is in your head. This is part of the traditional um, folk tale uh, that we have as part of um, our childhood and as part of, um, you know, those days when we were told stories by our parents or the first encounters we had with um, children literature. I'm sure you can tell that story, and I'm sure many of you may have used this story with uh, your students, why not? The question now is, what about this one? Do you know this story? Let us pretend that this is uh, another story we can tell our students. Um, we can find similarities with Rapunzel, but still, some things have changed. You think about those changes. You think about what is it that has changed. Uh, the characters, the situations, the assumptions behind those characters, behind those situations. Um, what is it that has changed? Has anything changed? Well, think about that. This could be good food for thought, stimulation to be uh, even more creative. The story goes on, right? Is this what you have in mind when you think of the story? Well, probably not. Some things have changed. What is it that has changed? Um, let us now take a look at another short film. This is narrated, so you'll see the image and at the same time you get to listen to the narration. When the video is over, there's a very interesting question uh, that is posed. Once again, we're going to make use of Padlet. I'm going to ask you to watch the story and once the story is over think about the final question and when you have decided what to say about it go to Padlet I'm going to ask you to come here once again and share your thoughts immediately what comes to your mind when you think about this story and when you think about that final question uh, after you have done so after you have shared that thought this story in particular should be triggering other values, other social meanings that we assign to practices, to people, to experiences. Once again, the core objective of this course is that we are able to design tasks, that we can take all these ideas uh, and, and translate them into practices in the classroom so that we can foster other processes, so that we can create opportunities for students to engage in using the language for a variety of purposes, not only for language practice, for the sake of grammar. So I'm sure this story will trigger more projects, more ideas. So once again, connect with the classmate. If you feel like swapping classmates and working with someone different, that would be nice too, because when you change classmates, you can also change perspectives and many new ideas can come up. So, if you feel like it, change classmates and think of another sequence of tasks. 
how would you take this story in particular to the classroom? What would you exploit? Sometimes when I'm, talk about, when I'm talking about exploiting a story, um, I'm not only thinking about exploiting it from a linguistic point of view, if you see what I mean. I am not only talking about exploiting linguistic contents, right? We may also be exploiting other concepts, other values, and they are very worth exploiting. Um, so this is what I'm going to ask you to do right now for the second, I don't know if this is the second or the third, but for the next part of the course, I am going to ask you to get together and plan a project around this short uh, film, Rapunzel. How would you take it to the classroom? What activities? What for? Can you implement technology in the way you are going to create activities and design um, the tasks for Rapunzel? Go ahead, include as much technology as you can if it is going to help you improve the way we go about some processes. So, time for you to work together again. I'll be connecting and monitoring and we're going to be sharing the way we feel about the possibilities of implementing Rapunzel in the classroom. We'll keep in touch. Once upon a time, there was a young, handsome man named Rapunzel. Rapunzel was locked away in a tall tower. He spent every single day inside combing his beautiful beard, knitting scarves and baking. He had everything he could ever want, but began to grow bored in his tower. So Rapunzel would sing for all to hear. One morning, a young princess was out riding her horse, and she stumbled upon the tall tower. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your beautiful beard. Rapunzel had never met a woman in his entire life. So naturally, Rapunzel fell in love. The princess saved Rapunzel and brought him back to her magical kingdom, where they got married and they lived happily ever after.